Hallelujah. Let's all stand to honor God's presence. Amen. And let us pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for your wonderful presence in this place, Lord Jesus. Father, we pray, Lord, that you open our eyes, our hearts, our ears, our spirit, Lord God, to receive from your word, Lord Jesus. That, Father, that the blessing that is for us, Lord God, for your children, would be upon us today, Lord God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. Father, we receive it and we claim it in the mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. It's interesting when somebody sneezes, what do we say? God bless you. Hallelujah. Yesuda. Gasunta yun, hindi Yesuda. Yeah. But when we say God bless you, do we actually mean what we say? Or is it just something that we learned you have to say it because somebody sneezed? So, right? Sometimes even if we don't think about it, we just do it out of um, tradition or out of practice and, and we just do it. It's part of our good manners and proper conduct, just like our please, our thank yous, God bless you. Yeah. The practice of blessing somebody who sneezes actually started way back, it's like AD 77. You know? And uh, what is interesting here is back then they thought that when somebody sneezed, that their spirit is actually coming out of them. That's why they said, God bless you, hopefully you don't get possessed by the devil. And some people, they think that um, when they sneeze, that uh, they would greet them in some cultures, uh, like in Germany, Gesundheit, which means in health or good health. May you have good health. Uh, in Spanish, yung salud actually is a, is a response to that as well. And then in Hebrew, livayu, hindi labada, livayu. Comes, uh, comes from the Hebrew word, uh, which also means to health. Amen? So when you say God bless you, it's not just actually telling somebody, may you have good health. It's much greater than that. It's heavier than that. Words are not simply sounds that comes out of our mouth. Amen? God spoke this world into being. That means there is creative power in our words. When we say something, something happens, right? Words do more than just convey information. The power of our words can actually destroy someone's spirit or even stir up hatred and violence. Amen po ba? Right? So we need to be careful with what we say and what we speak. Of all the creatures in this planet, only man has the ability to communicate through the spoken words. Hindi po tayo tumatahol o nagmimiyaw o nagngangangawa, although minsan nagngangangawa tayo, right? We don't speak like the animals, right? The power to use words is a unique and powerful gift that comes from God alone. And because we were created in His image and His likeness, we are able to be able to speak. We are gifted to speak. Our words have the power to destroy and the power to build up according to Proverbs chapter 12, verse 6. The writer of Proverbs in Proverbs 18, 21 says this, The tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Wow. So what comes out of your mouth, you will eat it. So if you're declaring blessings, you will receive blessings. If you're declaring curses, you will receive the curses back onto you. That's why we must use our words to build up people and not destroy them. Our words should be filled with love and not hate. Blessing rather than bitterness. Compliments instead of complaining. But this needs to be true compliments. Hindi yun bobola ka lang. Right? Real compliments. Instead of complaining, brotherly love and not lust, victory and not defeat. Like tools, they can be used to help us reach our goals or send us spiraling into deep depression. Sometimes even if we don't declare it to somebody, we declare it on ourselves. 
right? Sometimes we have this self-defeating attitude that we're always putting ourselves down. We should not do that. Cancel it and declare you are blessed. Declare that you are favored. Declare that you are God's love, loved one. Amen? And this is not just wishful thinking. God's word said that when we speak, there is life or death. In the letter of Paul to the Ephesians, in chapter, Colossians chapter 4, verse 6, says, Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer anyone. All right? In short, think first before you speak. Think first before you act. Jesus reminds us that the words we speak are actually coming from the overflow of our hearts. So when we are hurting, sometimes we become hurtful. I will say to people when they are angry, you know, there's, there's, an, there's a reason behind that anger. Right? It's, for example, if you come home, you're tired, you're exhausted, and then your child comes up asking for something, you're not actually angry towards your child. Something else was causing that anger, that stress. Kailan siya lang yung napagbuntungan mo. Right? And then now you're causing hurt, you're causing pain. And we must reverse that by blessing our family, blessing our children, blessing our spouse, blessing those around us. When one becomes a Christian, there is an expectancy that the change of speech follows because living for Christ makes a difference in one's choice of words. It says in Romans, the sinner's mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. But when we turn our lives to Christ, Romans also says that, uh, that we confess Jesus is Lord. So both things cannot come together. God is holy and sin cannot exist where God is. As condemned sinners, our mouth are silenced before the throne room of God. But as believers, our mouths are opened to praise and glorify God. Out of the abundance of our hearts, we glorify and praise Him. We thank Him because of what He has already done. Christians are those whose hearts have been changed by the power of God and a change reflected in our words. Amen? I remember when I was first, when I first became a Christian, I was, you know, when I'm driving and my wife, the guess na tong story na to, right? You know the story? You know, people usually cut you off. You kind of say something that you shouldn't be saying. And you try hard not to do it. But until you have that change of heart, change in your spirit, and you become a child of God, it's so hard to do it. But when you become his child, eventually it's gone. Eventually, instead of curses, you're declaring blessings. Instead of hatred, you're promoting hope and love. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. You have to remember, Paul describes those who are dead in sin, who are dead in sin are, as those who have throats that are open graves. Kanga puro kamatay ng lumalabas sa bibig natin. You are dead and in sin. Death comes out of us. But when the Spirit is in you, life comes out of us. Amen? And one of the best examples of using our words properly is blessing others. Our words must be full of blessing when the heart is full of blessing. So who is blessed here today? Amen? Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. So today we will declare blessing over ourselves, over our family, over those around us. Because that is what God said. The best examples comes from Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 to 27. God gave Moses and Aaron instructions on how to bless his children. In Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 to 27, it says, The Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons, This is how you are to bless the Israelites. Say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his, shine, his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. That is the priestly blessing. Amen? In Numbers chapter 6, verse 22 to 27, it says, So they will put my name on the Israelites and I will bless them. In other words, I will put my name on my children and I will bless 
my children. In each of the declarations, and let me go back. In each of the declarations, we see that each one comes from the Lord. In the Hebrew text, uh, we see here in the first word, oh, I can't really read it here. It's translated as Adonai, the second part there, the four letters. It's translated as Adonai, but that's because they don't want to mis- mispronounce the name of God. This is actually the four-letter word, Hebrew letters, uh, Y-H-W-H, the Tretramgrammaton, which means Yahweh, right? You are Yehovah. This is God himself, the great I am, the one who is and who was, who is yet to come, who proclaims these blessings over his children. God is telling Moses and Aaron that my children are blessed and I declare these blessings over them because they are mine. You, each and every one of us here, are God's children. We are grafted into his family because of Jesus Christ, the finished work of Jesus on the cross, and the resurrection of our Lord and Savior is what saved us and gave us the right to become children of God. Amen? It says here, God bless you. And this is what we will be talking about today. The declarations of blessings over God's children. There are three declarations that we can claim as his child. The first one is the blessing of divine protection. In Numbers chapter 6 verse 24 it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. This is Yahweh. In Hebrew, and I have it backwards, um, no, I have it right over there. In Hebrew, bless in Hebrew means Barak. Hindi Barak Obama. Okay? That's different. This Hebrew verb is a broad term that relates to the noun berek, which means knee and can mean to adore on bended knee. Wow. How many of the, you women recall how your uh, now husband, your ex-boyfriend, they profess their love for you? Were they on one knee? Or both knees? No knee. Baliktad, yung babae yata nag-propose. Ganun ba, Tameng? Praise God. Sabi ni Pastor Buboy, Amen! Hallelujah. So somebody who adores someone. It is common to hear this word at the beginning of nearly every Hebrew blessing. Basically, it's saying that we are to kneel before God, the creator of heaven and of earth who is the only one who deserves such adoration. In the Old Testament, blessing God does not mean we increase God's strength or put, add anything to Him. We can't. We can't bless God like that because there's nothing that we can add to Him. We're the created being. He's the creator. Amen? But when we bless God, what we are saying is that we kneel before Him and proclaim Him Lord over us and, pro- and just honor Him and adore Him and worship Him because of who He is. Not just of what He's done, because of who God is. But what's interesting here is He's saying He's the one who is blessing us. So the tables are turned. We're not the one kneeling before Him. He's actually, quite literally, the one kneeling before us and blessing us. Isn't that interesting? In the Old Testament, they already said that this is what God would do. And He did it on the cross. He took our place so that we would be lifted up through our Lord Jesus Christ. This priestly blessing basically comes from Yahweh or Jehovah, our Lord and Savior. This is truly an outpouring of God's grace because nobody can say that they deserve God's blessing. There's no good in us, but God still blessed us. Picture it this way. For example, you're before the Queen of England or the President of the Philippines. Sino na nga ba? Or the President of the United States, right? Sino na nga ba? Ang darating. Bawal ang magbagano rito, kampanya. Okay? <laughs> so imagine you're before the President or the Queen and you're in that, instead of kneeling before that person, they're the one kneeling before you. 
What kind of picture does 